what's going on guys it's dg back with another video today i am super excited to finally give you guys my performance review on the nike lebron 20s i am wearing my lebron graphic tee right here super sick but finally guys let's get right into this review before I start off this video, I wanted to put a disclaimer that I got these early from finishline.com due to one of their shock drops. And that's really how a lot of people that you may see on social media have been getting this pair is from the early drop from Finishline and JD Sports. So I was lucky enough to be one of those people who actually got these at $200 from finishline.com. Starting with the traction. So you see a lot of dust here on the traction, but basically it is a multi-directional traction pattern with a lot of treads going in obviously a lot of directions. This traction is at least a 9.5 out of 10, if not a perfect 10 out of 10. I can't even begin to describe just like how excited I am to give you guys this review because starting with the traction, like, this, like there's not really a downside to this traction. The only thing that I would critique it on is maybe the durability. But if you are playing indoors, like you'll be fine. It's not gonna like wear down on you like you're gonna play outside, right? Like being realistic here, like if you are looking for a performance basketball shoe in terms of traction, these will work wonders. And the reason why I am so excited and bullish on the traction is because the court that I play on is really bad, guys. It is bad. It is the same court that Wear Testers, Nightwing2303, my guy Chris, used to do his performance tests on. And he would always say, if you guys have followed Chris for as long as I have, he would always say that like that floor is really bad. So if a traction works on that floor, the traction is very good for that shoe that would work on that floor, right? And this was one of those shoes because I play on the exact same floor. That alone just solidifies this traction setup because I play on a bad court. And it does pick up a lot of dust here. I actually clean this too. It is a very easy wipe. And despite the grooves being pretty close together, the dust does not affect this as much, guys. Like. I probably wiped over a three hour session, like maybe once every hour. And that is really, really good in terms of how much you have to wipe a basketball shoe. Traction is very good. I did have, I think two slips in these. And when I say slip, I don't mean like actually slipping, but like slipping to a stop. So that was the only time that I experienced like bad traction, but again, like, that is due to the floor. So the traction is very good. It has a very high squeak. It stops on a dime and you can actually move in the shoe. This is not the LeBron 19 guys, not only because of how it looks, but like traction, if we're talking about traction and grip, I promise you this is elite. So this is at least a 9.5 out of 10, if not a 10 out of 10, like the 10 out of 10s are like the Kobe nines and you know, the GT cuts maybe, but these are very, very close to it. I had no issues. Only thing that might be an issue if you play outdoors is durability because like the grooves, especially at the front are starting to wear down just a little bit, but not too much. But like I said previously, if we're talking, you know, if you're playing indoors, if you are a working adult like myself, for example, like you're not gonna wear through these. You know what I'm saying? Like the durability is not that bad. Like I know people are talking about how like thin the grooves are or whatever, but like this is a basketball shoe. It's meant to be worn. Like of course any basketball shoe is going to wear down at some rate. And this is not like a not durable basketball shoe. Like it is durable and the traction is pretty like firm. Like. I actually don't think it's too pliable. The traction is supposed to be a little bit pliable so you get the performance. But in terms of durability, I, I think this is durable. Like I wouldn't take this outdoors, obviously, but if you are a hooper who plays indoors, high school, college, adults, whatever, like this will serve you well. And I play, like out of all the basketball gyms that I play on, 
that court is really, really bad. So the fact that this traction worked on that court and I was playing how I normally play, which is shooting, driving, you know, doing a step back, like moving fast, like that is a really good sign. So traction is elite. Now, moving up the shoe is the cushion setup. So the cushion setup is full length cushion, most notably seen here by this dark purple. And then you have a zoom turbo unit at the forefoot, and a bottom loaded zoom unit at the heel. And this setup, <laughs> guys, I am just like mind blown that we finally have a LeBron that's good. So this setup is really, really catered to all positions, I feel like. I know that's a generic statement, but I truly believe that because a Zoom Turbo, we first saw that on the Kyrie. And obviously Kyrie's are guard shoes. You know, heel zoom is just an added touch. Like most people play on their forefoot. So any impact protection at the heel is great. The Cushlon is also super comfortable. In terms of impact protection, this shoe has you covered because of those three setups in cushion but in terms of overall performance and playability these feel like a guard shoe because you stack the cushion on top of this traction and it is super responsive you move fast the shoe moves with you it feels like an extension of your foot it is super responsive and i would say it's not as dead as the kobe fours if you guys play in the Kobe 4 Pro Tros, like the forefoot to me was pretty dead. Like there was pretty much nothing besides the back portion of the Kobe 4. But like these remind me of a hybrid cushion setup between like the Kobe 4 and the Kobe 5, where it is super catered to court feel. Like you can tell that LeBron and Brownie, Bryce, this was like inspired by the next generation because it has very good court feel but it also has like that Kobe 5-esque vibe where there is a zoom turbo unit in the forefoot that you can actually feel. And especially in the back, right? Like the cush line you can feel and then that extra zoom unit is also comfortable as well. So I would say any comparison that I could give is like a Kobe 4, Kobe 5 hybrid, but think of it as a little bit more beefier in terms of comfort and cushion than the Kobe 5. So in this shoe, you can actually feel the zoom turbo in the forefoot. I don't know if it's because I am a little bit of like an average bigger size guy. I do weigh 180 pounds. I just weighed today actually. And I am six feet tall. And like, I do feel the cushion. And it's not like a cushion where you feel like you're going to spring forward. It's just noticeable. So it's not gonna be like, you're going to be like jumping out the gym in these, like the Jordan 36, for example, with that plate. But these feel like a beefier version of the Kobe 5 Pro Tro. And that's the best explanation and comparison that I can give. So case in point, this cushion setup is catered towards guards, but you can still feel it. Like it's not gonna be like a Kyrie 5 where they put zoom turbo in the forefoot and you can barely feel it, but it's still there. Like you can actually feel this cushion. So it has a great balance for like all positions. And if you're a point guard, these are responsive. If you are a big man, you can still feel the cushion probably more than a smaller point guard, right? So this has a great balance of both cushion and comfort. And then moving up the shoe, we have the materials. It consists of this knit wool pattern. And overall, it is very comfortable. There's also a lining on the interior of the shoe. So you're not feeling the knit directly, right? Like there's an actual like jersey type lining. Materials, can't complain. They are durable. Like you guys can see here, I don't know what, how well you can see that, but like this shoe has been stepped on like a bunch of times. Like you can still see some like brown marks. I don't know if how well that comes off on camera, but basically this shoe has been stepped on a bunch of times. I have played in these for many hours and there isn't really any signs of wear or tear there are signs of wear and tear like here like where the eyelets are of uh, just a little bit but overall this is a durable shoe guys like this is not a shoe that is going to rip on you i don't think like i play with a lot of torque and force and bursts of speed and i do a lot of jab steps uh, step backs like you know, I really like play in my shoes 
And so the fact that these held up and that I felt comfortable, and I don't say that about a lot of shoes. So this is just a kudos to the LeBron 20. The materials are comfortable and they're durable. That's all I can say for the materials. And most of all, it looks premium. I think this colorway doesn't really give it justice because the violet frost upper or the purple upper doesn't look the best for this knit, but I think the colorways for the future of time or the time machine colorway will really highlight how nice the knit looks, especially in white or black. So materials are comfortable, they are durable, and they provide a lot of support. The fit is true to size. Whatever you got in the previous LeBrons or any other Nike basketball shoe, get that size in these. Regardless of whether or not you go up half a size in another shoe or what have you, I do think this is true to size. And the second time that I played in these, I did get some pain in my right foot. And I'm not sure what it is. Maybe my right foot is bigger or I don't know, is more prone to, you know, getting aches or whatever. But after I took these off, like my right foot actually ached for like two days. But I think it is also because I have a slightly wide foot as well as a flat foot. And so this shoe is a little bit narrow, but my point is that you may have to break these in. But even with my experience with my foot aching, I would not go a half size up. I wouldn't even go half size down, obviously. Definitely go true to size because it is a low top. So you don't want your heel slipping out of the shoe by going a half size up. I think that the aching in my foot was due to a lot of factors and you do have to break these shoes in, I think. And another point I wanted to mention is kind of the flexibility of this shoe and the overall support. I think the flexibility is a little bit not the best, obviously because there's a plate in here and it's supposed to help you with torsional rigidity and support overall. But I kind of like my shoes to have a little bit more of a flex here. It's not too big of a deal, but I did notice that because when I was starting to think about why my foot was aching, I was just like, maybe because like the, like the, it's so, it's a little bit rigid here because of the plate, which I am personally not, you know, bashing the shoe. But I do think that has to do with my foot being flat and like it was just like hitting the ground so hard and wasn't bending as much. So that is something to be aware of. If you do experience some pains, especially as a wide footer playing in the shoe, like just break it in, play in it a couple of times and you will be fine. But with all that being said, the support is very, very good. You are locked into the shoe, you know, no heel slippage especially with the Nike Sphere material at the Achilles and going side to side laterally, even vertically going up and down on a fast break. These shoes provided me everything that I needed to perform how I play. And that is all a hooper can ask for. Knits is no joke. It is very durable and provides a lot of support, even though it is kind of like a knit material like don't be mistaken this provides a lot of support even for how hard i step back and you know drive and all that stuff i will try to put footage as well to show you guys how i actually play and all that stuff but overall support is great fit is true to size the only thing i would watch out for is that you may need to break this shoe in if you are a wide footer in terms of ventilation a small thing but it is not the most well ventilated shoe but it is better than a lot of shoes because it is made out of a knit guys like it's not like a fused material that's on top of plastic or what have you this is a pretty well ventilated shoe but it's not going to be the best so in ventilation, I would just give it like an average score, you know, maybe like a seven out of 10 or something like that. Aesthetically, I think these are fire. They remind me of a Kobe. I know a lot of people get kind of offended by that statement. I'm not too sure why, probably because LeBron and Kobe are some of the greatest players of all time and they kind of have a rivalry among Laker Nation. But objectively, these do look like a Kobe because of the forward facing Nike swoosh and the fact that it is a low top. And I am not mad at that at all because Kobe's are unobtainable. LeBron is one of the greatest players of all time. And the fact that this is a good performing basketball shoe that looks good, I am making that statement surprisingly 
because I don't know when the last time we had a great looking basketball shoe. I don't know, outside of the GT cuts that actually performed great, that actually you could wear casually. And I feel like aesthetically, these are fire. The colorways that I've seen leak, check out my previous videos to see kind of a breakdown of what's coming next for the LeBron 20. Aesthetically, these are fire. I feel like you can wear these casually. I wouldn't even be mad if I saw someone on the street wearing this. And I see a lot of people in the LeBron 19s actually are going on sale like casually on the street. So I can only imagine how those people are feeling right now to see a LeBron that actually looks good. And not saying the 19s look bad, but performance wise, they just weren't good. So these are fire aesthetically. I cannot wait for more colorways. And the content on this channel will go crazy for the LeBron 20 because I actually passionately like playing in this shoe. In terms of weight, this shoe is pretty light on my feet, even in hand. Like I wear a US size 11 and at my height, my weight, I actually felt like I could play in this shoe. And I know I've said that a lot of times throughout this video, but I can't stress that enough. When I lace up this shoe, I actually feel like I can play basketball. And I can't really say that about like a lot of shoes because either I get a little bit of pinching or pain or, you know, constant aching or like the break-in process doesn't work for me or the traction doesn't work. The cushion isn't adequate enough for me and my knees feel bad afterwards. I just think this shoe, the LeBron 20, really caters to what I like. And I think, you know, as I'm getting older, I need a bit more impact protection, but also my game is more focused on guard play and, you know, offensive play and, you know, making cuts or, you know, doing a step back. And I think this shoe just really hits the nail on the head for everything you might be looking for in a performance model. Even if you don't play basketball, and I would suspect that a lot of you watching this video may not be like into hooping like that, but like are fans of LeBron and just want his shoe. And for those people, these are a must cop. Instantly, wear these at the mall, like these look nice. Like wear these casually, these are fire. And then for the hoopers out there, like I am sincerely speaking to all of you because I've been playing basketball, you know, all my life. And just like all of you guys, right? Like this shoe is surprisingly amazing. And I say surprisingly because like since the LeBron 16, maybe the 15, although the 15s weren't really a guard shoe. Since then, we haven't really gotten an exciting LeBron. And it is really awesome for sneakerheads, for hoopers, for people into basketball shoes to finally get a LeBron that is actually playable and would cater to everyone of all ages, heights, weights, sizes, positions, all of that stuff. Like this shoe really covers all of those boxes. The only thing that is a concern for a lot of people is the price tag of $200, which is by no means cheap. It is really expensive. However, with the past history of LeBron's, I do believe that LeBron 20s will go on sale eventually. And that is when I recommend all of you guys to cop. If you are an avid hooper who, you know, is kind of like me and into the sneaker drops and basketball footwear, then cop on release day. But for all of the people who are on a budget and, you know, are working a job, but like can't necessarily pay for a $200 shoe, super expensive then I really recommend just waiting for a sale because Nike always mass produces LeBrons. Nike wants everyone to wear a swoosh on their foot and LeBron is their most marketable athlete. So these will definitely be mass produced, mass quantities. You just have to wait for a sale. And I think with this aesthetic, it being like a Kobe, these will fly off the shelves for the first drop, but over time, people are gonna be like, I can't afford this a little bit and we'll wait for a sale. And that's when I recommend you guys to cop as well. So that concludes my LeBron 20 performance review. Hopefully y'all enjoyed. This is probably going to be my longest review because I put a lot of hours into this shoe. I put a lot of torque and force and hours and just overall play into this shoe right here. And I wanted to give this video some excitement, some feeling, try to relate to all audiences. I know a lot of you guys may not be into the performance aspect. 
and just want someone's opinion on the shoe casually. So I wanted to give that perspective as well. But hopefully y'all enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already for more LeBron 20 content because I do believe I will be collecting this shoe because of how much I like playing in it. And make sure to follow me on all my socials at DG Hoops. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.